Hey guys, this is Adam Carswell, the founder of the Dream Chasers platform, and thank you for tuning into our content. We've got some phenomenal creators making a name for themselves on this platform, and we just want to say thank you for going on this journey with us. It's been a lot of fun over the past few years, and hey, we're just getting started. We would also like to take this moment to shine light on our sponsor, Raise Masters, the number one mastermind for elite capital raisers. To learn more about Raise Masters, you can go to raisemasters.com. That's raisemasters.com. And again, thank you for investing your most valuable resource with us, your time. Now kick back and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the TGIF with Courtney podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Stone, and today we're joined by an amazing guest, Sam Adams. Sam, how are you today? I'm doing well, Courtney. How are you? I'm great. Great. It's Friday, so <laughs> can't complain about that. Yeah, I love it. So uh, we're just going to jump right in here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey to where you've gotten today and what are you doing today? Yeah. So my name is Sam. I currently run and own a company called Sunflower Agencies. We specialize in digital marketing and consulting. We initially, I initially got into that space about five years ago. I was working for an advertising agency that basically specialized in crowdfunding campaigns like Kickstarter and Indiegogo and all that stuff. And I built what's called an influencer network for them where essentially I had all of these really famous people and outlets and social media handles that I could text or shoot an email to and say, hey, I have this cool project. Can you do a post about them? And that network ended up doing 2.5 million in the first year that we had it. And I was like, huh, I feel like maybe there's something here that we could do. So I left that company and went to the corporate world and did influencer and partnership management for a multi-billion dollar company in the essential oil space for a couple of years. Uh, Got really tired of making other people a lot of money for something that I'm good at. So when COVID hit and everyone had to work from home, I decided that was a really awesome opportunity to just start doing my own thing. So I started doing that and Sunflower Agencies was born in 2020 and it's been a roller coaster ride from there. But We started doing influencer management and consulting and social media strategy, and we've worked with companies like Ace Hardware. We did stuff for the Super Bowl this last year, which was really cool. So yeah, it's been really baptism by fire for sure, but it has been so awesome to kind of do my own thing that way and and run run it my own way instead of working for the man, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like you already had all the tips and tricks and tools and you were teaching them some stuff from that like 2.5 million campaign or whatever. So that's props yeah thanks I feel like it it was definitely luck in some situations like I was like I feel like this could work but it was all about just jumping off the cliff and seeing if it would happen and so that's kind of been the mantra that I've embodied in my business is take the leap and see if it works out and it usually does but sometimes we crash and burn but that's just a good lesson to learn later (laughs) on in the future (laughs) no I feel like that's a good lesson because like if you don't take the leap then you'll never know what's going to happen you never take risks you never branch out or anything meet new people start your own business so that sounds awesome sounds like the main motivator there was yeah just knowing you had the tools and kind of taking the risk to yourself and really just trusting yourself to start your own company so that's amazing totally Totally. they're like um, family motivators or personal motivators that you just like wanted to break out of like the W2S world or anything like that. You that know, man, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure you know this, but being a woman in the running your own business space in the entrepreneur world is very difficult and very interesting. And sometimes there are hurdles that we have to deal with that other people really don't. And I got really tired of people telling me that I couldn't do it. Or that maybe I should just like go back to grad school because I was in grad school when I started my company in 2020. I was doing it online, going to get my master's, paying tuition by myself. And I sat there and I was like, why am I not just starting it now? Why am I waiting for a certain piece of paper to tell me that I can do what I already know how to do? So I just dropped out of grad school, had to pay off all my student loans that I had, but you know, I was like, you know what, I'm going to have to do it now. I'm going to have to do it later. So I dropped out of school, started my company and I just really got tired of people saying, wait, you know, let's just go do it now. Definitely. I think that that timeframe that people give themselves, it's like, you don't need a timeframe, just start now and something will happen. And you kind of just get you get on a roll there. You just keep going and things progress or they fail. And then you move on and 
do something new or do what you did before. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think a lot of people wait until they feel ready. And that's the biggest lesson I've learned owning a company is you are never going to feel ready ever. You just have to wait. You just have to rise to meet the challenge. You yeah, know? exactly. And then I think if you wait too, it also like gets more competition in the field. Cause now everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. I feel everyone's starting their own companies and businesses it's so much easier sometimes to learn the knowledge of starting a business because everything's online like you have like the base you don't need to go to school I know that's one of Adam's Adam Carswell obviously um like main thing that he likes to hype on sometimes is that you don't need college I'm like well I have a college degree but you know so do I and I I learned lots of really good lessons from going to school don't get me wrong but I was sitting there in a couple of classes and I was like, I could teach this class. This is on social media strategy. I know exactly how to do this. I've been doing it for five years. And so I think it's entirely dependent on the person. School is really great for some people. And it was really great for me in a lot of ways, but my mind definitely thrives when I'm solving problems while I'm in them. Yeah. And so building a company and learning those lessons as I go, it's kind of baptism by fire, but that's the only way my brain will let me work because I have to figure it out. Otherwise I'll just be complacent and wait until it solves itself. Yeah, I feel like that is a lot of people though too. And the majority, they just, they have to push themselves into starting that step or making a new process for themselves because if you stick to the old ways and they haven't necessarily been working for you, then you just kind of like stay in that habit and don't yeah, branch out or anything. And then you don't learn <laughs> either. So no, I think you're doing a great job with that. I think- uh, by fire, as you say, no, that's a great way to put it. Like, just put yourself in the deep end and you might get burned, but also you might just like ascend from the ashes or something. You never know. Or you learn how to swim. Yeah. Like the only way you're going to learn how to swim is by jumping in. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So when you were starting your business, uh, I know you had a lot of the tools already, like you said, you had all that experience, but were there any other, um, like trials that you had to go through kind of like the trial by like fire trial and error that you had to learn to actually start the business itself for like the entrepreneurial perspective perspective. Yeah. From an entrepreneurial perspective perspective, I for a really long time was so terrible at asking for help and saying, I can't actually do this. And so for the first probably calendar year of my company existing, I was doing everything like outsourcing, scheduling, automating, consulting, building all the reports, designing, like I was doing everything. Cause I'm like, I have to, this is my company. I need to know how to do it. And I think there's some value in getting that experience, but I wasn't able to take on any more clients. Cause I just didn't have the time. I was staying up until two 30 in the morning, building these reports and working on stuff for clients. And it's actually really funny when I met Johnny Katani, he was like, why are you, why don't you have an assistant? I don't know, like I can do it. It's totally fine. And he <clears throat> showed me this book called Who Not How by Dan Sullivan. And he's like, you need to read this. And so I read it and I mean, like hired an assistant, outsourced a bunch of stuff to my team. And now we were able to scale and we have three times the clientele that we have. We were doing work for the Super Bowl this year. So it took someone I love and respected being like, you can't do this by yourself in the most loving way possible. He's like, I love and care about you. You need to like scale and you can't do that by yourself. So that was really fascinating. I also had a, a little bout with cancer this last uh, summer and fall. So that put a lot of things into perspective for me as well from what's really important and what's not. So lots of learning and growing. And again, baptism by fire, it's the only way I'm going to learn anything, I swear. But yeah, so it's, it, if the biggest lesson I think that I've probably learned in the last two and a half years is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together for sure. I love that lesson. I thought I've never actually heard that quote, but I'm going to quote you on that now because I, I love that. Oh, please do. Yeah. It's, it was a painful, but very necessary lesson to learn. Yeah. And I think as women entrepreneurs, we think that we need to like be this big, bad, tough boss lady who gets, excuse my language, gets stuff done, but we don't, we can be that way in a lot of ways, but um, I think that we're kind of programmed to believe that we need to handle it all on our own. And it actually is more powerful and shows more courage to ask for help when we need it instead of just being like, oh, I'm fine, I can do it by myself. Yeah, and I agree with that, especially because when you're coming from another corporate setting, like like you said, you were told by people that you couldn't do it because your gender or whatever else. So it's kind of like you already were given that mindset because of previous jobs. And I'm glad you broke out of that mindset because yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not a fault to ever ask for help ask for help when you need it, ask for help when you want it, just <laughs> as long as it's no, like, harken back to problems for others, but I doubt that you're starting a company, you're helping people, like, that's not. 
<laughs> yeah. Help never is a bad thing. I don't think everyone asks, yeah. but no, that's, that's great. Um, and props to Johnny for giving you the advice. He was on an episode previously. So guys go listen. Bless his heart. <laughs> yes, yes. No, that's great. And I think other people too, they, they, you learn from them too. So when you have more people working in your business or even just around you in that same kind of environment, you also take a lot of lessons from them. So that's a core system I think is really important too, but yeah, it sounds like yeah, surrounding yourself with people who want the same, not necessarily the same things, but think the same way and are moving in the same direction as you is so, so important. So, so important. Definitely. I agree. Okay. Well, yeah, it sounds like you've gotten a lot of experience from this and you've learned so much from your thriving in your business. So what kind of daily or monthly or whatever kind of time frame you have, like motivators or um, like little habits that you keep going to motivate yourself? Yeah, I think <clears throat> when I, so I had some pretty major surgery in January and was down and out for a little a little while recovering from that. And as I had to kind of come out of that and relearn some routines and structures and habits, one thing I have really loved doing, I block out my calendar from 9am to 10am every morning for personal time. So whether that's if I need to go to the gym in the morning, or if I just want to make a cup of coffee and enjoy a book before I start working, that time is always blocked out. So I don't feel rushed to get to my desk. It keeps me very centered and allows me some kind of grace time to get ready for the day. And then from 10 to 11, it doesn't happen every single day, but if I'm at my desk by 10, I like to do, I'm in this thing called the personal development school that helps me kind of relearn some habits or work through some triggers and stuff that helps keep me very focused on my personal development, which is really nice and always applies to my job. Because if I'm doing well up here, then that translates into how I work with my clients. And if I'm flustered or frustrated, that always translates into how I communicate with my team. And I don't want to be that kind of boss. So I have to, because I'm such a go, go, go person, I literally have to schedule time out for myself and make sure I take it to pause and slow down. Cause if I don't, I'll run myself into the ground nine times out of 10. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I think like the work life balance and like making that time for yourself, like it's so good for your, just to keep positive and like for your health and wellness to everyone. Um, and yeah, blocking that time out, I think is so important connecting with yourself, doing whatever you have to do to get ready for the day. Cause if you already start the day in a bad mood <laughs> or whatever else, yes. other stuff is bleeding in, then like, it just kind of ends up in shambles. I think you can't focus as much, can't do anything. Right. Yeah. So, and there are days that I'm not good at it. Like there are days that I sleep in or I have something going on in the morning. And so I have to just go to my desk as soon as I get home. But that's something I very, I try to keep very forefront in my mind is make sure you, you leave time for yourself, go on a run, go to a yoga class, go do something that kind of helps bring you back to center. It's yeah. so important when you're running your own business for sure. Definitely. Is there anything else that you do to kind of, again, like balance your health and wellness with work, personal life, that work-life balance, I know gets a lot of people um, in a daze sometimes because they never feel like they're not working anymore, especially when the phone technology, everything's around you, you can always get emails and stuff. Yeah, I think that society has taught us that we constantly need to be grinding, especially as entrepreneurs, like we need to be going 24 seven. We need to be constantly thinking and working about our business. And I think that like minds like us are always thinking about our business and we want to be improving and getting better. I have a really hard time just being still and letting my body rest and recover and kind of just come back to center. And I have had to make a conscious effort to realize that my body actually needs that. It needs that downtime. It needs the stillness. I take a bath almost every single day just as my quiet time. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I wish I was kidding because that's kind of embarrassing that I have to do that every day, but it's my like peaceful, quiet time. Like I don't, I listen to music. Sometimes I'll bring a book in there or sometimes I just kind of mindlessly scroll, but it is the one time in my day where I am still. And it is so beneficial for me. There have been a couple of times where my friends will look at me and be like, when was the last time you took a bath? Like, are you you good? I'm like, no, I'm not. It's been a couple of days to go make time for that. So that's honestly probably my biggest thing is I just take that time in my day to pause, reflect, and just recenter and take a bath. It's not complicated, but it works. <laughs> I, I love that your friends know to ask you that specific question to see if you're doing okay. It's like, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Today. Yes. And, and, they're, and they're like, whenever I move into a new house, they're like, does it have a tub? I'm like, of course it does. <laughs> it has to. <laughs> 
awesome. No, I love that. I, I don't take too many baths myself, but you know, maybe I'll get into it and try that as a person. Girl, make it a moment, make it a moment, light some candles, listen to some music, read a good book. Like there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with taking some time for yourself in that regard. Definitely. And speaking of taking time for yourself. So this is TJF with Courtney. So what do you like to do for fun to kind of separate that work-life balance even more? What do you love to do in your free time? Oh man. So I was a CrossFit athlete for a really long time. And before that I was a competitive swimmer for about 14 years. So all things sports, always a good time. I'm a super huge water person, as you can tell by the bass. So I love swimming and kind of just being around the water. Um, I turned into a really big runner as of late. I'm doing a big race in uh, Washington in September with my friend. It's a, a basically a trail running race. And then you jump into the sound and swim with your partner. You're like tethered to them on this rope. And so I've been training for that with her for the last couple months. That'll be super fun. Um, but I also really love yoga and I'm actually a published author. So I write poetry and do that when I have some free time as well. Yeah. I love that. I, my go-to is to write some poetry. I don't have time to write like a short story or a book. I was an English major. So like, I'm like, let's oh, was I? I, I knew it. Um, no, that's great. And wow. Props to you. I've never heard of the, the swimming with a partner actually tethered to you. I've heard of like the triathlon, maybe like tag team someone, but that's a whole other level of like fitness right there to work with someone else. I've never heard of it either. And me and my friend, my girlfriend, we swam together in high school and got recruited for swimming in college together. And she was like, maybe we should try it. I think that we'd be pretty good. Neither of us have done it before. We have no idea how it's going to go. So we're just going to send it and see what happens. But it's been fun to train for. <laughs> and it sounds like you've already been super fit. Like if you were a CrossFit trainer and like a competitive swimmer, swimming is like one of the hardest things and it makes you rip all over. Like the, every muscle gets used. You have to hold, hold your breath. So Again, props right. for all of that. I'm just a runner. I don't do anything special, but that's awesome. Hey, running's hard. It kicks my butt every single day. So don't discredit yourself there. It's a tough one. Yeah, I feel like some people like the runner's high. Uh, I feel miserable when I'm like in the middle of it, but then you hit a point where you're just like, okay, this is nice. <laughs> I hate actually running. Love how I feel after I run. That That's it's a lot of people. Yes. And so I'm like, I will hate it. I'll complain the whole time, but I'm going to do it because I like how I feel after. <laughs> It's also like an added, I think, like stress release too, to be able to complain about just like the physical moment because you can't focus on anything else, but like your lungs burning, your legs aching and all that. So I think right. it's a good mental break there. Any kind of workout I think is more so of a mental break, but yeah. So that's awesome. Sounds like, can I get the name of your book? Cause now I've got to look it up. Yeah. I actually have a copy right here. It's called facing the sun. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it, it's basically, it looks like this. I can send you the link on Amazon, but um, it's basically, a it became a journal, a way for me to process and really think about what was going on in my life. And I never really shared my poetry with anyone because it's very like personal and vulnerable. And I shared a couple of poems with some friends and they were like, will you please just put this in a book? Like we would just really like to read all of them. And so I self-published uh, last year and it's done way better than I expected. I never did it for any like monetary value, but it's just up on Amazon. You can order it and it gets to you in two days. And it's kind of cool to be like, yeah, I wrote a book that people can buy. Definitely. That's one of my goals for a professional life. I want to get my, my stuff out there, whatever it is, but Do yeah. It. Awesome. I love that. And uh, I noticed there's like a flower on the cover too. Is that kind of like harkening back to your sunflower kick with your business? Yes, it is. Yeah. So a lot of people, so I got a divorce when I was 23 and a very transformative time in my life for sure. And a lot of people, I just decided one day that I was really tired of being like the sad version of me that I was. And so I made a very conscious effort to rewrite that. And people started calling me sunflower Sam for a long time. And so I was just Sunflower Sam, like that's just what it was. And then when I was starting my company, I'm like, well, it has to be catchy and something about marketing. And I was like, no, it doesn't. It can literally just be Sunflower Agencies and it's stuck and everyone remembers it now. And like a big part of my business is connecting people and kind of shining light on new opportunities. And it just kind of happened the way it was supposed to happen. And so I have a huge sunflower tattooed on my arm and her flower crown on the book cover is sunflowers. So it's just a whole big theme, you know? 
it all works it all works together behind yeah. sunflowers too i'm sure you can get into that as an english major previous english major <laughs> no but that mm -hmm. sounds great and it's it's like a, a happy thing to look at it's something that brings joy to people's lives it's it's sunflower so no i think that's a great aspect for one year business and then also like a great way to show your personal side too it's a, a good yeah. sign great sunflower Sam I got it now <laughs> yeah yeah and as being like the front of the business too like one of my greatest strengths is being able to connect with people and talk to people and that personality is is very memorable in a lot of situations and so it's just it's crazy how the universe works and how it all kind of works out that way you know but I love it it's it's one of the best things that ever happened to me that sunflower Sam yeah well I'm happy for you because look at you now. You're doing great things, big and better things. You have a book, you have a business. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been it's been a tough road, but wouldn't have it in any other way. Yeah. So thank you so much. I just have one final question for you, just something fun. Um, so what's your favorite song or podcast at the moment that you're gonna be blasting once like 5 p.m. hits or whenever you get off today since it is Friday? <laughs> oh man. <sighs> Favorite podcast? I'm gonna have to shamelessly plug Johnny's podcast that just launched a couple of weeks ago, the Investor Relations Real Estate Podcast. Such a good one. Um, not just because I helped him with that, but because it actually is a spectacular podcast. He does an incredible job. I am also, as far as music goes, have you ever heard of Dennis Lloyd? I think I've heard of him. I'm not. Okay, so I need you to go listen to him immediately because he's phenomenal. He is my top number one streamed artist for the last like three years. And he just, every song that he puts out, it's just the happiest vibe I've ever heard in my life. So he will probably be blasting uh, today at 5 p.m. because it's the weekend, um, but also a huge EDM and electronic music fan. So I listen to a lot of that as well. So we'll probably blast some of that this weekend too. Oh yeah, definitely. I got a, a birthday party this weekend. So there's going to be some of that too. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, I love it. Enjoy it. Yes. Thank you. And enjoy your weekend too. So thank you so much again for coming on, Sam, and sharing your story, Sunflower Sam. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, any uh, last thoughts or comments you want to leave with the audience just about life in general or lessons or whatever you want on your heart? No, the only thing I would say, thank you for having me. This has been so fun. Uh, the only thing I would say is just uh, take the leap. Yeah. That's, that's what I've had to embody. And I think that's the only way people are going to get anywhere. We're always going to be scared and we're always going to be worried about the risk, but it's absolutely worth taking 10 times out of 10. Okay, well, thank you so much for that, Sam. And yep. yeah, guys, thanks for listening. This is TJF with Courtney. Bye.